Hey friend, how are you? I hope you're well. Today I'm going to talk about my dating experience thus far as somebody who hasn't really dated much in their life. The reason why I don't have much dating experience is because I was in a committed relationship from the moment that I was 19 until 27 years old. And that is quite a long time. And when that relationship ended in 2019, boom, the pandemic happens and also recovery from said traumas of that relationship. And then you're locked down. You can't even go anywhere. I'm not really an online dating person. And if I'm being completely honest, I didn't even like the concept of dating. I found it very awkward. And I just thought that if I can see the end of this relationship, there will be no beginning. AKA, if I don't even think you're gonna be the love of my life, I'm not even, I'm not hungry. I'm not going on this date with you. I'm not eating. I'm not meeting up with you. I'm not sitting across from you, but I have changed my tune due to a lot of people letting me know the benefits. And if I'm being honest, I have seen so many benefits in dating multiple people, getting to know them. And I just wanted to share my experience with you so that if you're feeling reluctant about dating or you're down because you've been dating a lot of people and none of them seem to be the one, maybe this can give you a very perspective on why it's actually beneficial to keep going on those dates, girl. Keep meeting those people and keep learning what you're meant to learn from the experience of dating. One of the things that dating has taught me is that intentional dating isn't only successful when it leads to marriage. I date intentionally. I wanna meet the love of my life. I wanna be married. I'm not just going out on a bunch of dates because I'm hungry for a good meal or anything like that. That is not my style. I'm too awkward for that and I'm really not that hungry. But at the same time, I used to not even wanna go out with someone if I felt like they weren't the love of my life. One, that's so convoluted because how can I even be sure, right? Like the little pieces that I've learned about this person from meeting them socially or being introduced to them isn't really enough to know the whole person. But at the same time, dating with intention means that you're learning about yourself, you're learning what you like, what you don't like. And when you experience somebody, which I think dating is, dating is in experiencing someone with intention, you get to know more about what's important to you. So there are some people who will never ever speak again, some people who have ghosted me, some people who I decided weren't the one for me. And when I look back on all of these experiences, I'm not sad, I don't think it was a loss because in each and every single one of my dating experiences thus far, I have pulled key critical information that I will need for my future husband, my ultimate relationship that I wouldn't have gotten if I didn't go on this date. So to think that your relationship or your dating experience is a failure because he's not the love of your life is to be very short-sighted and not to really gain all of the perspectives that are actually available to you when you decide that experiencing someone is going to teach you some important things that even if they aren't the final destination, those tools are going to be necessary for that final destination. Another thing that I've learned from dating is that experiencing people going on dates gives you words. Thinking back to my last relationship and how although I was there, there were some things that didn't feel right, things that didn't feel satisfactory, ways that I didn't feel like I was getting what I needed. But at the same time, I did not have words to explain what the loss was. Why? Because I had never experienced it. So yes, we're hanging out, but I don't feel secure. But at the same time, how can I say I don't feel secure when I don't even know what security feels like? But now with going on dates and meeting different people, I have learned words. I know what it feels like now to feel safe. So when I don't feel safe, I can express that because now I can measure it against what safety has felt like. I know what it feels like to be close to someone, to feel considered, to feel ridiculously uncomfortable, to feel unsafe. I have learned all of these things by dating and now 
when I enter into a relationship, it gives me more confidence to really advocate for myself because I know what I'm advocating for. I think that one of the difficulties sometimes with dating is that you can get gaslit when you ask for things from somebody and they don't have it in them to give you. An example of this would be telling someone that, oh, I want you to do X for me in this relationship because it makes me feel special. It makes me feel wanted. It makes me feel seen. And them saying, has a guy ever even done that for you? Why are you talking about this? You're too lost on Twitter or on TikTok or wherever, seeing all these fake guys doing things for girls that don't exist. And then you stop it and think to yourself, has someone actually ever even done that for me? Do I even know anyone who's experiencing that? Maybe they're right. Maybe I am thinking in fantasy world and the things I want aren't actually attainable. And then I suppress my needs right? But because I have experienced that, I've had people open every single door for me. I've had people bring flowers on every single day. I've had people wish me luck, remember what I say, all the bare minimum things that maybe I wasn't experiencing before. So now I know what they feel like and I can advocate for myself in confidence and also walk away from situations in confidence because if you don't have it in you to give me, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you don't have the muscle mass to carry the load of the type of love that I need, that I'm deserving of, and that's okay. That's okay, and I'm gonna be able to walk away from it in confidence because I know that it's available, because I've experienced it before, because I have the words for it, and because I am confident enough to know that I am going to get it, just not from you. But on the other side, if you don't have the confidence because you haven't experienced, because you don't have the words, because you don't feel that it's actually available, you end up staying in situations that don't even fully serve you. You don't feel secure. You don't feel safe. You don't feel confident. You don't feel rooted. But you also don't know what that exactly feels like. You're not confident that it's available. So you're scared to ask and you're scared to leave. So you end up staying in subpar situations. So dating has given me the words, the feelings, the vibes I know what it feels like now and if you don't have it for me all the best dating has also made me really buckle down to what my priorities are my non-negotiables and also be a lot more open to things that I thought I would never ever do before so one of my non-negotiables is Christianity like I do not play about my religion I do not play about my relationship with Christ so that is one of the things that I'm not going to play about. But other things that I used to think I could never, I would never, right? Like long distance, maybe age, different things like that, that I thought would really never be possible for me. I've learned that to keep myself so narrow-minded is to actually do myself a disservice. Some of the people who I've dated in this past year who have been the most interesting, most engaging, most special to me are people who, if I had been so rigid in my box of this is what you have to look like in terms of vanity metrics, I wouldn't have even given them the time of day. And these people have actually been the ones who have set a bar for me, even if they are not the person I'm going to end up with. I'm going to take that bar and walk around and use it to measure every other situation. And if I had continued to be so rigid, this would not be the case because I wouldn't have even had the privilege of experiencing this person because I would have taken something so vain, so minuscule, like a diminishing asset and used it to measure an opportunity that has literally changed my life. So I'm not saying don't have your non-negotiables. Me personally, I have five. I used to maybe have like 15 or 20 if I'm being completely honest, but now I have five things that I know without having them in my life, long-term, I will not be happy, satisfied, fulfilled, safe, and comfortable. That's what I measure on. If you can hit those five things, I am quite open to every other thing. Whereas before, I know people who know me <laughs> will listen to this and be like, yeah, you were kind of a hard ass, but I'm getting better, you know? And I've learned that to be open is not just a benefit to those people, but also a benefit to myself. I don't want to block my own blessing because I think it should look a certain way. What I want is to be blessed. I want to be blessed with the person who I'm meant to be with and 
I don't want to miss that because I have decided that it has to look a certain way. So really loosening up and not being rigid has become one of the things that I have gained from this summer of really dating people and getting to know myself. As you date, if this is the path that you're on, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, your work in progress, making progress. It's not easy, but it's worth it because if you stop short, if you give up, who knows when it's supposed to happen? You don't want to give up prematurely and not go on that final date that could be the date that will lead you to everything you want because you don't believe it's possible. But if you go in with the mentality of I'm going to learn something, I'm going to gain something, even if this situation isn't the best, even if he's not the one, I'm still going to gain something. Then you'll be able to look at dating with more optimism instead of the pessimistic nature of saying he's not the one, another failed one, another failed one, another failed one. That relationship dynamic may have failed, but the ultimate whole experience is not a fail if you can find something in it that benefits you. So I hope this helps. Let me know what else you need and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.